Hello, thanks for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of our post today is Turbulent Times Are Here. One of the most challenging aspects of being a watchman for our nation at this time is balancing warnings with encouragement and hope. Too much emphasis on warning and it can demoralize, causing despair and eroding faith. Too much of, it's going to be okay, can lead to complacency. I never want anyone to become fearful because of my posts, and I completely believe what I released yesterday. God has begun a season of suddenlies through which he intends to save our nation. I also know that his salvation will, in part, result from a difficult shaking that has begun and will intensify. The shaking is not because of God's anger, but is a reaping. This type of reaping is often required in order to awaken people to their condition and need. The prodigal son is a clear example. It's also true that Satan, according to Daniel 7, 25, tries to alter or change God's times and laws. Laws there could be translated God's decrees or plans. It means the decree of a king. He does so. He alters these things not by overpowering God, but by impacting, wearing down, and immobilizing the saints, it says. Interesting phrase there. We are God's methods. If Satan can influence us, he can alter some of God's desired times and plans. Not God's will, but his plans. Jesus referenced this in Luke 19, 41 through 44. It says, when he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. Literal translation there would, could be, he burst into tears, saying, if you had known on this day, even you, the conditions for peace, but now they've been hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will put a barricade against you, surround you, hem you in on every side, and level you to the ground. Throw your children Throw down your children within you, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because, not because of his will, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The destruction of Jerusalem wasn't God's will, but the people, by their choices, rejected his will. Satan is an opportunist. He looks for opportunities. Open doors created by people's decisions and actions. Luke also told us that when Satan is trying to steal God's seeds, which are his words, including his promises, he does so at the most opportune times, kairos. Luke says in 8.13, those on the rocky soil, he's talking about the parable of the sower who sows the word, God's seeds. Those on the rocky soil are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and yet these do not have a firm root. They believe for a while, and in a time, kairos, opportune time of temptation, they fall away. Three times in Acts, this word, kairos, opportune time, is used to describe Satan's attacks. Acts 8.1, 12.1, and 19.23. He waits for the best time, the most opportune time, to launch his attacks, stealing, killing, and destroying, John 10.10. 10. This verse in John's Gospel contrasts God's plans, abundant life, and Satan's plans. We must cooperate with God in faith, obedience, prayer, etc., to receive his abundant life, while also being alert 
to Satan's schemes so he will not be able to take advantage of us. 2 Corinthians 2.11. One of the meanings of the word advantage in this verse is to get the bigger portion of something. This is why we're told to be on the alert and pray at all times. Kairos times is the word there. Ephesians 16. All kairos times of attack. Be on the alert for these opportune attacks. I labor this point somewhat because of erroneous teachings declaring that God's sovereignty means he's in control of everything that happens to us. Not true. We have a vote. Obviously, what God has declared as his end results on earth in Revelation and elsewhere will be accomplished. But just as with Israel in the Old Testament and Jerusalem in Christ's day, we play a role in receiving his will and promises for us personally. That role includes prayer and spiritual warfare, binding and resisting Satan. Now, my primary reason for today's post. America is at one of the most vulnerable times, Kairos times, in her history. America is at one of the most vulnerable times in her history. Bullies prey on the weak, and America is now weak. The cyber threat has never been greater because of Biden. The, uh, excuse me. The cyber threat has never been greater because of Biden's and Harris's border policies. Terrorists and enemy soldiers are now here. Do not doubt this. And our enemies, China, Russia, Iran, and others, have never felt more emboldened. Their mocking spy balloons, fighter jet flybys, while, Bi while Biden hands the torch to Harris, they did a little flyby just to show off a little. Mocking spy balloons, fighter jet flybys, while Biden hands the torch to Harris, and graffiti stating Hamas is coming here are simply our enemies' ways of saying, you can't stop us. China owns land in America next to, next to, directly next to, 19 U.S. military bases. We now have a cognitively impaired, lame duck president for the next six months which our enemies are very aware of. If Trump's elected, he won't stand for their attacks, which they also know. All of this means, all of this and more means the next six months are a very opportune time, Kairos, for our enemies to hurt us. I do not want to alarm you. I want you to persevere in your prayers fervently, faithfully. God has said America shall be saved. He's also said a major shaking is coming. Pray for mercy in the shaking. Ask for cleansing and salvation for our nation and worldwide revival. We do not have to miss the time of our visitation, regardless of what Satan attempts. We will not allow him to alter our time and steal our promise. I am humbled to be part of the great prayer army God has assembled worldwide. I'm proud of the great company of intercessors carrying his heart and birthing his desires. 
And I tell you without fear of being wrong, this can be our finest hour. Yes, attacks are coming. Violence will increase. Bad people here and around the world will flex their muscles. And demonic forces are about to make some moves. But this will all be used by God to awaken people as we pray. They will cry out and he will answer. His glorious ecclesia will rise in authority and power, revealing him and his majestic son. Yes, turbulent times are here and coming. But also know that God will arise and his enemies will be scattered. Don't doubt it. Let's pray. Three verses. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Psalm 103, 8. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, compassionate, righteous. Psalm 112, 4. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and great in mercy. Psalm 145, 8. Father, thank you for being merciful and gracious. Thank you for your light, which shines in the darkness. We ask for these traits to manifest in the coming shaking. We declare that mercy is ours through Christ and that his light will overcome darkness, which it always does. Shake down evil strongholds systems, laws, plans. Rise up and scatter your enemies. Terrify and rout the wicked in the day of your power. Reestablish America in covenant with you. Bring salvation to those who are still able, willing to turn. We ask that you bring your kingdom rule to America again. We pray for these things in Christ's authority. Amen. And our decree today, we decree that we, the ecclesia, will stand in the day of battle. We will. We will stand in the day of battle. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Don't be distracted by all the stuff that's coming. Just stand in faith and keep declaring what God says. Thank you for joining me. We're going to keep doing it daily right on through this season. I'll see you Monday.